In Germany, a fiber roofer or a freelancer is someone who offers service in a sector in which they are trained to do so. And these sectors are well defined in German law. And everyone who is practicing a freelance position are legally required to file a tax return annually. And one of the most important forms when it comes to filing a tax return for a freelancer in Germany is the Anlage S or the Attachment S. This form has to be submitted along with your income tax declaration to declare profits from your freelance activity. So in this video, we'll go through the form page by page to get you started on your freelance journey. For those who are new here, my name is Srijit and in this channel, we talk about wealth, happiness and some times boring tax forms. Now keep in mind that I'm not a financial advisor or a tax expert. I'm just sharing what I learned from my own experiences. So take all this information, but make your own decisions. We are going to fill out the form with the online software from FinanceSam called Elster. So I'm going to assume that you already have an Elster account. If not, you can watch this video, get an account and then come back here. Once you log into Elster, you can see all the forms by clicking the formula and Leistungen button on the left. Form S is an attachment to be filled along with your main tax declaration. So we expand on the section Einkommen Steuer Erklärung or Income Tax Declaration and click on the EST 1A form. Select the year you want to do your tax return and then click on Viter. Now if you have already made a declaration with Elster, you can take over most of your personal data from your previous submission. If the option is the use it, it can save a lot of time and effort. If this is your first time, then this section will be empty and you can continue without the data takeover. Now we get to a section called Anlage Assistant. The tax office wants to help you find the right forms by making you answer a few questions. Normally, you must fill out a main form called the Hop Ford Rook and then multiple attachments based on your individual situation. Now, you can watch this video to understand how to fill out the main form or the Hop Ford Rook. In our case, for a freelancer, we know we need to fill out the attachment S. So we continue without the help of the assistant and manually select the forms. If you want to attach any certificates along with your declaration, you can do it here. We proceed without that by clicking on Viter One Beshainigum. Now we go to the section on the left and click on Unlag an S to start filling out the form. The first step is to add a tax person by clicking on the plus button on the first box. To do it for your partner, click on the second box. We go to the first page given or profits by clicking on the button next to site. In field four, you must enter your profits from your freelance activity. Just enter the activity and the profit amount. If you have a loss, then enter the value with a minus sign. If you practice more than one freelance activity, then you can enter that by clicking on the white trade dart and Hinsufugen and inserting a new line. Now remember that the value which we just entered is the calculated final profit. We also need to submit supporting documents to show how we came up with this value. As a freelancer, a simple accounting with details of your income and expenses would be enough. And this could be done with a simple income surplus form or Einnahmen Übersur Schreschnung or the EUR form. This you can fill out and attach along with your declaration. If you practice freelancing in a region that comes under the jurisdiction of another tax office than your place of residence, in that case, enter the responsible tax office name, your tax number, and your share of profits in field 7. This also applies if you have income from partnerships, for example, a GBR or OHG. Then the tax office responsible for the company will calculate your share of profits and inform your residence tax office. You must provide the company details, the responsible tax office, the business tax number and your profit share in line 8. And line 9 is kind of a special case and is only relevant if you are involved in some kind of tax deferral models or depreciation companies. So I'm going to skip that and go to the next line. Again, line 10 to 11 are also special cases. For example, if you made profits from lottery or if you're part of some supervisory board. So we are going to skip this and go to line 12. This concerns you if you have income to which the partial income procedure applies. For example, if you have shares in corporations such as Arges or Gmbehas as the operating expenses of your company, the profit shares like dividends and capital gains are only 60% taxable and 40% remains tax-free. The taxable part is to be noted in the rows we filled earlier and the tax-free part goes in line 12. And if you have ended positive income in lines 4 to 8 or 10 and 11, which you can offset against losses according to the Umwandlung Stoic assets or the conversion tax set, then enter it in line 13. Line 14 and 15 only concerns you if you are part of a venture capital company. And here you have to enter the taxable part of the benefits. There is also a distinction between venture capital companies that was founded before 1 1 2009 and after 31 12 2008. And field 16 deals with part of your profits that remain in your freelancing business and have not been withdrawn. You must also include the attachment 34A and note the number of 34A attachments you will submit along with your tax declaration. If you are a small freelancer, then most most of the fields here may not be relevant for you. You may most probably have to enter the profits on line 4 and that would be it. 
Now we go to the next page for Ausrums Kevin. This records the capital gain from the sale or abandonment of your freelancing business, a partial operation or an entire partner share. Here you are eligible for an allowance if you are unable to work or you are at least 55 years old. The capital gain if the allowance is applicable should be entered in line 31 and in case the allowance is not applicable for you then in line 36. If this income comes under partial income procedure then the taxable part must be entered in line 32 and 37 for each case. In line 42 you enter the loss from the sale and in line 43 the share to which the partial income procedure applies. You must mark line 44 if you or a relative owns a stake in the company that took over your freelancing business, a partial operation or a partner share. Now we go to the last and the final page. Now if you have received any special profits for example a compensation payment for a lost revenue then you have to enter it in line 45. Line 46 and 47 are about income from part-time jobs that comes with a tax exemption. For example, if you worked as a trainer for a non-profit organization, then the revenue earned up to 3000 euros is tax-free. The total amount has to be entered in line 46 gesam betra and the taxable part is to be recorded in the next line. And finally, you have to give the line number in this form where you enter the taxable part. You can now attach the form to your tax declaration by clicking on the anlage ubanemen. And as I said earlier, This form only records the profits, not how you came up with the profits. For that, you have to use the Ainame Ubasu Shreshnum or the EUR form, which you have to submit along with this one. You can watch this video to learn how to fill out the EUR form. If you are unclear about something, then it would always be better to get some professional tax advice. Some of the information that I shared here may change or become irrelevant in the future. So, always do your own research and verify before you submit the tax return. A lot of effort has gone behind making this video. So, if you got some value from this, then give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. Until I see you with another video, take care, have a wonderful rest of the day and bye.